You're watching Lifetime's Intimate Portrait, Famous Families. Following in my dad's footsteps, I chose music as a career. Tracy Ellis Ross is also the daughter of a musical legend. Unlike her mother, Tracy set her sights on acting. The star of the hit show Girlfriends is both sexy and hilarious. Tony, it is stupid to get hung up over a birthday. Who cares? You're getting older. We're all getting older. Chicken skin! Given her vivacious personality, it was only fitting that Tracy made a grand entry into the world. The legend um, is that my mom was on the staircase and my, my dad said, boo, because it was Halloween time. And my mom's water broke. <laughs> On October 29, 1972, singer-actress superstar Diana Ross and her husband, music promoter Robert Ellis, welcomed their new daughter Tracy into the world. Life would never be the same at their Beverly Hills home. Born to a black mother and a white father, Tracy embraced diversity from an early age, a virtue instilled in her by both of her parents. I do remember my mom saying this, you judge people on who they are, not what's on the outside. And that was a big lesson to me, you know, plus the fact that, for God's sakes, my family has every mix, color, race, religion. It's the biggest blessing and gift in my life. Tracy was the second of Diana's three daughters and was always close with her sisters. Me and my two sisters all shared a room, and me and Chutney, our beds were right next to each other. As the child of a star who embodied elegance and style, Tracy quickly developed a passion for her mother's wardrobe. One of my favorite things to do when I was young was go with my mom to work to either the fittings or to sit in her dressing room while she got dressed and watch her do her makeup and hide in the quick change booth while she changed. Tracy's always been the clothes person. She's always been into fashion and always sneaking up into my mom's closet, trying on all the clothes. In 1977, when Tracy was five, her parents divorced after six years of marriage. The split was so amicable that Tracy and her sisters barely remember it. It obviously wasn't traumatic. My mom is pretty extraordinary with that kind of thing. Now a single mother, Diana moved the girls to New York in 1979. Though she was one of the biggest recording artists in the world, she made sure Tracy and her sisters had a normal home life. Mostly while we were in school, she didn't travel and tour. While we were in school, she um, stayed home and made sure that we had a, you know, an, a great family structure and always had dinner together. Some of the earliest, most wonderful memories that all of us kind of remember is that my mom is the best waker-upper in the world. She would turn the radio on like a lovely station, and she would usually lean in the doorframe and go, are you going to wake up, girls? In that very mommy voice. It seemed like a normal family, just with, you know, a little extra superstarness. But outside the Ross home, it was anything but normal. The girls could never forget that their mom was a legend. She couldn't walk a block without getting recognized. There would be people like banging on the limousine. Like it was like <laughs> crazy, like Beatles stuff. There was times that it was scary. Despite her mom's celebrity, Tracy didn't shy away from the spotlight. In 1988, while still in high school, 16-year-old Tracy signed with the Wilhelmina Agency and began modeling. Part of that had to do with me wanting to sort of prove that I was pretty to me. And, you know, that's very short-lived because it's not something that's important to me, and it just didn't, it didn't work for me, mostly because I had too much to say, and the photographers were so busy going like, okay, um, can you stop talking and try and look sexy? Thanks. Tracy took to the stage in high school, where her early attempts at singing were anything but spectacular. So I did the Pirates of Penzance. I was in the chorus, and I did not sing the words. I went like this. And I started off key. And by the time I got the second line, my voice cracked. After graduation, Tracy enrolled at Brown, where she studied theater. Her famous mom hoped she'd move away from the stage and study law or medicine. She was like, don't you want to be a doctor or a lawyer? I'm like, from all the mothers in the world, don't you think you would get it? <laughs> I think she got it. It was always, is that what makes you happy? Is that what you want to do? Go for it. But when I got to college, I decided to just take a chance and I took an acting class. And that was when it started for me. That was when I got the bug. A year and a half later, Tracy auditioned to host a New York-based lifetime television pilot called The Dish. 
So what's it like to do a love scene in front of a studio crew? Not to mention a few million people watching at home wearing only a couple of these. I investigated this one myself. After doing 18 episodes of The Dish, Tracy decided that if she were going to be a serious actress, she would have to head west. She really wanted to make it work here because her family's here, and then realized that, you know, much like the fashion industry is in New York, you know, acting, you have to go to L.A. Coming up next, a homemade videotape changes Tracy's life. You're so stupid! And it was sort of like a coming out party for me. And later, Natalie Cole struggles to overcome the loss of her legendary father. My mother changed. Our relationship changed. We were a very broken family. When lifetimes... In Hollywood, there's only so far your last name or your parents' fame can take you. And when it comes down to it, it's all about one thing, talent. In the late 90s, Tracy Ellis Ross set out to prove that she was more than just Diana Ross's daughter. Upon her arrival in Los Angeles, Tracy was determined to make a name for herself as an actress. She landed an agent, but little else was happening. I just kind of was like asking people to help me. What should I do? Where should I go? And I was kind of, you know, a struggling actress in LA trying to make it work. I think Tracy is always very optimistic or tries to find uh, the light side of any dark situation. With the holidays approaching and little money in her bank account, Tracy decided the perfect gift for her friends and family would be a video Christmas card. I did all these different characters talking to the camera, saying their version of Happy Holiday. Everybody, we stand very closely. You shut up, all right? Get off my case. I want you to go and have a happy holiday. Life sucks. Oh, you're so stupid. At best, it's very funny. Happy holiday! At worst, you're a little alarmed for me. <laughs> and you think, maybe she needs help. And it was sort of like a coming out party for me. I think that that's the moment when I realized that she was going to be an actor, is when I saw that. I mean, I showed it to a few people who could not believe their eyes and just, I mean, it was hysterical. Really very good. Not long after Tracy's tape made the rounds in Hollywood, her career picked up steam. Her big break came in 2000, when she was cast as straight-laced attorney Joan Clayton in the UPN series Girlfriends. Her audition had won over the show's executive producer, Kelsey Grammer. I was very charmed by her, and during the shooting of the pilot, uh, I realized that she really had the good. It's really funny because the day she auditioned, she called me on the phone saying that she had on her lucky underwear, <laughs> and she was so excited. She really felt like this was just going to be a great part. Tracy brought much of herself to the role of Joan. Did you pull a muscle? <laughs> no, Joan, I was just trying to look sexy. Oh. You don't think I'm sexy. No, of course I do. I could do it again. Come on. <laughs> this one was a woman who on paper looked like she had it all, but she still had a vulnerability inside her and hadn't quite figured it out. I'm tired. I'm tired of turning the other cheek. I'm tired of trying to understand you. I'm tired of being your whipping dog. I'm tired of explaining to people what's good about you when I'm not even sure myself. The person that's in the center of the show, around which the, the comedy kind of revolves, has to be a little more grounded. And uh, she had all of that, as well as that sparkle that you have to have. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh. Oh my God! You are 32! Oh you have been lying about your age since fourth grade? Girlfriends has been a hit for Paramount, and the comedy hasn't shied away from controversial subjects like the issue of race. I thought it was very adventurous, courageous um, of our writers to tackle such a large issue as being uh, a mixed person. Um, mixed child, interracial child. It's a sensitive issue for me because I think that a lot of people misunderstand it. I don't think that the color of your skin defines who you are. With her role on Girlfriends, Tracy has earned fame in her own right, separate from the identity of her famous mom. Tracy just has such a, a gift to make you cry and to, to, to make you laugh and to make you feel. And it's so wonderful to watch her 
um, grow as an actress. Despite Tracy's success and the fact that she grew up the daughter of a pop superstar, she's managed to keep her legacy in perspective. You know, I'm just a kid with a mom who has a specific bag of experiences that go along with Diana Ross being my mom. But other than that, I've got the same struggles and fears and joys and all that that anyone goes through growing up and trying to figure out who they are. Now in her 30s, Tracy continues her journey. But she's not alone. She knows her family will always be there for her, no matter what. I could not go through life without them. They're it for me. With Tracy's 